Hey there crew, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks for hanging out with me today as I set up my weekly plan with me. This week, I'm going to be doing something different than I usually do. Usually my weekly spreads are just focused on what's happening this week and then setting up kind of for the rest of the week and everything else that's going on. I do a mix of daily logging. I do a mix of just kind of weekly note taking. And I thought this week I would try to follow the bullet journal method a little bit more closely. Over the past few weeks, I've been taking the Bullet Journal and Beyond course that Ryder Carroll and BulletJournal.com has been doing, and I'll put the links for you down in the descriptions below. But while I've been taking that, I thought it was just going to be a refresher, if I'm going to be very honest with you. But it ended up showing me so much more around indexes and dedicated indexes, which I have to have do a whole other video on. This week, I was taking the part of the course that talked about the weekly spreads and the daily logs. And I was like, oh, maybe I haven't been doing this right. I know that I've been taking a minimal twist approach, right? I take this minimalist layout for a weekly, and then I just focus on like adding in some fun things into my bullet journal. But what was different from how I've been doing it to how the method has been teaching it, which is that the weekly log is a bit about reflection, it's a bit about planning, and then it's also about the daily logs that you're going into. And then utilizing this along with your monthly to kind of really plan things out. So this week, that's what I thought I would do. I'm going to have a space over here that we're going to focus on just a reflection on last week. We're going to have a space over here, which is going to be looking forward into this coming week. And then we'll be setting this up over here for our daily logs. Now, when I work inside of this larger notebook, this B5, I do like to split my pages. So that's what we're going to be doing pretty much. I do have a lot of stationery that I have out. I've been working on a lot of different things. I've been organizing all of my stamps into sections, and we're going to be using some of these. I've also been collecting a lot of new things, different type of stamps and calendars and whatnot. And we're going to be using those still. But I wanted to take kind of from a layout standpoint, from a process standpoint, a little bit of a different approach. So excited to have you here along with me today. I'm really excited this week because I've run out of my ink on my uh, the Monte Verde One Touch, the Engage. I love this. I've cleaned it out and it's ready to get some new ink. So I thought the first thing we would do today is fill up our Engage. So the Engage is a fantastic pen. I've been loving it because it is like a roller ball pen uh, in, its, in its tip here. And what's so great about it is that you have the converter. This could also work off of a cartridge if you wanted to, but you can fill this with whatever ink you want. So it's all of the benefits of having a roller ball or a ballpoint pen, but with all the advantages of having a fountain pen because you can use different inks. Now this week I'm going to be using the Smoke Noir. This is one of the inks that I have. I've actually had these inks for quite some time now and I just haven't been using them as much. And I'm always like, well, why am I not moving, using them as much? And that's just because I'm like, well, you know, for a little bit I kind of fell out of using my fountain pens and my fountain pen ink. And now after the DC Pen Show, I have like a new love for fountain pens again. That's the, that's the magic of a fountain pen show. Kind of reinvigorate you, <laughs> what I loved so much about it. I'm only going to be filling this pen up about halfway. I really enjoy using different inks and I actually have some different inks on their way an entire new kit from Birmingham Inc. that they just released with some new colors. So I'm thrilled to have those on the way. So I didn't want to overfill this one because then I'll just get impatient and not want to use this pen or like empty it out. I also love the ease of this pen from a standpoint of you don't have to take anything apart. You can actually fill it right from the bottom. And then you just have your, your push click here at the top like a regular pen. I recently reorganized my entire studio here. I'll be doing a studio tour in the future because everybody asks for those. And the last time I cleaned out my office, I didn't do it. And then I completely just redid the whole entire thing. Um, and I came across all of my materials that I love so much. So got this guy back out. So for this week, what we're going to be doing, as I mentioned, it will still be a double page spread just because the notebook is so ginormous, right? <laughs> so the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna create a section over on the left, and this here is going to be um, kind of a reflection space, as I mentioned. Then we're going to do another section here, and this is going to be for this week. 
as we go ahead and plan for what's going on here. And then as we move into our daily log section, I'm going to be just splitting that page in half here. B5 is a really large notebook. I've really enjoyed my time inside of this B5, but there is just so much space. Having a full page to the right is just kind of nuts. So I'll use this. I'll probably use the following pages too, depending on the notes and the daily logging that I'm doing inside of there. Now to get this general spacing, I am just gonna do what I usually do inside of here, which is really just setting up this space right here. So over here on the right hand side, what I'll be doing is uh, splitting my page a little bit just because of the space that I, I want to be able to use here for a few different things. So what I'm going to be doing first is splitting my page in half. So I have this spacing here that I really enjoy. This is going to be 15 squares on the left. We'll have two in between and then another 15. And then over here, what we're going to do is just split the page right in half. So this is going to be 16. And 16. And we'll just draw that line straight down and we'll have the space to write there. Across the space here is going to be pretty easy from a standpoint of what space do I need for the actual reflection of, of what we're doing and how we're doing it. So I'm going to use this five row spacing here, but I am going to split it up a little bit in how I'm using it. For the reflection part over here on the far left hand side, I'm going to be using this layout here, but I'm just going to be kind of squishing it together a little bit because up in the top corner, I have a calendar stamp that I want to use just for an overview of the week. So we'll use that up over here. Since this is more of a reflection page than anything else, I want to make sure that I'm using this page appropriately. Then what I'll do is I'll just kind of shrink all of this down. So this will end up being seven squares up and that'll be for five. And then that'll leave us with 11 at the top. And that'll be more than enough for this stamp. And then a little bit of space for reflection. I don't need a whole lot. I'm just kind of just kind of jotting down a handful of things that happened that past week as a way to think about what needs to happen for this future week. Then over on the right hand side of this left page, we're just going to use this straight one here. And so that's just going to break my squares up into nine a piece. This gives me a lot more room to write. And that's what I want for that full week. So let's go ahead. We're going to set this off to the side now. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be taking this minimal twist approach in these videos as we go through everything, which means as we're setting things up and talking through them, the first part of the video will be that minimalist setup, which is really just setting up the lines and the grid that we're going to use for that week in the weekly overview or whatever type of collection we're creating. And then the twist is going to be where we add some fun. That's stamps, that's different type of markers or drop shadows or maybe anything else that we might do inside of here. So if you want to keep it pretty minimal, you got this whole first part of this video to follow through. If you want to have some fun with it, as I like to have fun with, that'll be part in here. And I'll break that up for you inside of the timestamps below in case you want to skip to those parts. Totally up to you. Let's go over materials for this week. So we already started off with the Engage Pen and the Smoke Noir ink. We'll be using this as our daily driver for writing this week. I do have a brand new pencil. I haven't been able to record anything or any reels or talk about it just yet, but this is a really fantastic, cool mechanical pencil from Uni. So Uniball has just rebranded to Uni now. So a lot of the things I'll be saying in the future, especially with anything new and the new branding, I'll refer to it as that, but I feel like I still have say Uniball. I've been so used to saying that for all of these years. So this is the Kuru Toga Advance. Never used this pen before. It talks about some very special feature. I had to use my Google Translate on this essentially to say like, what, what is this saying on here? But what I've come to understand is that the reason this pencil is so amazing and I don't know that I've ever really noticed this before in my pencils, if I'm being honest with you, but mechanical pencils, when you're writing with them, one side of your ink starts to get a little bit lighter after time because you're writing and you're writing, and then you kind of get that edge on it. This pencil is different in this mechanism that's inside of here. So when you put your pencil tip out here, and you write with it, pay attention right here, there's this little mechanism right here that will spin. So every time you're writing with it, and you pick up your pencil, it's advancing and moving around the pencil here. Now what that's doing in there is actually rotating your lead. So as you're writing inside of whatever you're writing inside of, and it's going to create kind of a cone shape, so you'll always have a sharpened pencil, so to say, versus when you get to a point, you gotta kinda like, 
you know, move your pencil around a little bit to even it out again, it'll always keep it in that direction, which is cool. So that's the whole review on this pencil, <laughs> more than you probably wanted to know about as we got started today. We're also going to be using the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. I have that in a small today. We'll be using that mostly for the lines that we have going on. I've got my eraser. I also have a new eraser that someone recommended to me after my previous videos where I dropped the stamp ink and kind of made that mistake, which I do all the time. But this is really cool. I hope that I won't need to use it today, but if I do, it's called a sand eraser and it's very, very coarse. And what it's supposed to do is if you get a little bit of extra ink or a little stamp ink on your page and you don't want it there, it can actually erase pen, which is pretty neat. So I'm gonna be keeping this with me here in my studio as I work anyway, because I think it's important to have just in case for mistakes, and I love that. I have my ruler here for my straight lines today. I also mentioned before that I have this really fun stamp. I'm really excited about this. I love using it. It's from Midori. They have a lot of really cool pre-ink stamps. So this you don't have to put inside of ink. It already has ink inside of here, so it's self-inking is the right way to say it. And I really like this because it can be used for anything. You just highlight or color in your calendars that you need, and then you're all nice and done. For the twist today and the other fun items that I'll be using, I am going to be using some different stamps, so I do need to have my ink. I've got my acrylic blocks here for those. I'm going to be using these really fun ones from Moo Splice. These are new circles that I just got from Desk Gems, and I'm really excited to use them. They'll be used for some of the dates of the week and things like that. And then I also will be using, very excited, my Endless Stamps. These are from Sambi, and they click together. So as I'm putting in the dates, you can easily just click them together. They hold, you can stamp down the dates of the week or whatever you might need. So we'll be using these too. So first things first, let's go ahead and set up what we're going to need for this week from a standpoint of laying things out. As I mentioned, we're going to be using uh, two columns for this left-hand side of the page. So over here, this is going to be uh, 15 spaces, two, and then another 15. And I'm just gonna pencil them in real quick. All right, so we've penciled everything in now. I just started to notice as I was writing this sunlight that's coming in from this window over here. It doesn't usually come in here, but this is giving quite the nice morning vibe today. I'm liking this a lot. <laughs> All right, now that we have everything penciled in, what I'll do is start to lay things out slowly. The most important part this week for me really is just really getting this whole left-hand side set up because it really isn't something that I've used before and I'm really excited about doing that. So let me go ahead and just lay this stamp down real quick so that way I can get everything else that we need in here today. And I'll feel like I've accomplished something. Be careful with the lift so we don't have any mistakes. The calendar is not necessary if you really don't want that. I'm using that really just to get myself ready for this whole planned week. If you're really just focusing on the bullet journal main method here, you really could even just keep this section over here just to write out your things and not square them off. But I like to do that just to contain my space as I'm going through. Now that we have that all set in here, let's go ahead and just use the small size Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. We'll go ahead and draw on all of our lines and then we'll be done with the minimalist part and then we'll switch over to the twist and add in some fun stationery. All right, as nice as that sunlight was, it was way too bright on the page. So we got to dim that down a little bit. All right, so this is the general approach that we have for the week. So if you're going for that minimalist look, you can go with something like this, weekly overview, review, and future planning here, and then move into your daily logging inside of here. If you're here for the fun stationary work, that's what we're gonna get into next. So we'll set up the rest of this with some fun things and also plan for the week as well. All right, the first thing that I wanna do Get my pen going. I've got that new Smoke No More ink inside of here, and it's ready to go. So nice, cool gray color, I guess is how I would refer to it more than anything. <laughs> and the first thing I'll do over here is just fill out my calendar for the entire rest of this month. We're kind of towards the end, but that's okay. We're, we're having fun. 
If you're a fan of these type of calendars, I actually have a freebie that I created that you can print out and then cut out and then put inside of your notebooks if you want. I'll also put that for you down in the descriptions below if that's something you're interested in. All right, now that we have that in here, we just have to mark, well, when, when, when are we? <laughs> We're still in August right now, so I'm gonna use my highlighter pencil. This is another cool one from Faber Castell as well. And then we're also going to highlight this week. All right, and then let's go ahead and do some quick stamping. So we're gonna use that over here on the left-hand side. Those will be the reflection for last week, just during the work week. Now that I'm thinking back on it, I might want to do an actual full week because I do have so much stuff going on because I have a lot of stuff that ends up happening on the weekends. And if I'm reflecting on the previous week, I think that that should include the weekend as well. So maybe next week we'll change that up for ourselves, try something different. I know for the week ahead, I'd like to keep it five days a week. What I'm thinking is that after this week here, next week, my girls start all of their fall activities. So I'm going to need to also plan ahead for that too. I have it all digitally, but I do like to remind myself throughout the week when those things are happening too. So next week is going to look a lot different probably than this week does, but let's go ahead and get things moving on this one. So we'll go ahead and do this for Monday through Friday here real quick. So that was the 15th through the 19th. So these really cool endless stamps I love. You just pop those together. You can get these from Desk Gems if you're interested. I'll pop a link down in the descriptions for you below so you can check that out if you'd like. And we're just gonna go ahead and just put that in the top corner, nice and easy. And then as you're done, you can just put down the five, pick up the six, snap them together, keep going. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing I'm just holding this right over top of my paper. Like I could drop my stamp at any second <laughs> and it would ruin my page. I need to take better care of these pages. All right, next will be the Moo, I call them Moo, maybe it's M-U, but Moo Splice Stamps. These are these circles, I absolutely love them. I also have my entire stamp collection organized now. I have to do a video for that finally after finishing it, after starting it months ago stopping and then now i just have a boost of motivation to get it done and i did it and i'm very proud of myself all right we're gonna have fun this week i liked this one here this was a fun one because it's a circle but then also is like the dotted line so i can write in the date for the week so that's what i'm gonna do you're gonna be a good boy and put those right away and organize them less the cleanup later all right, so let's go ahead and write in this week here. Um, so I think what I'll do is just write in the dates up the top here. I'm gonna fill in most of the stuff for my reflection outside of this video since a lot of it is reflecting on work, but because I do mix both personal and also my work inside of here, I'm gonna use this as both. So I'm just gonna put a handful of things down over here for just reflection from last week. What went on last week, anything special that kind of happened and uh, thinking about that. So these are more items that I got from Desk Gems. These are these really cool little push click stamps. Uh, love it because again, they're self inking. A lot of work events are also going to be happening this week. I'll fill those in afterwards here. And then to get our week started over here, I have one of my Eric Small Things Good Day Stamp. I always like to start the week in a fun way. And I think Eric is a great way to do that. She's a fantastic stamp artist. I'm a huge fanatic, like so much stuff on its way from a recent release of hers. <laughs> uh, so you'll be seeing a lot more of those stamps in the near future. And this will be our first day for the week as we kick into our daily log and then our weekly log here as well. I'll also be pulling items from my future log as well. Let's see if there's anything that's going on this week that I need to pay attention to. This is this week here. One thing I did forget, we needed to celebrate from last week was the girl's first day back at school. We have totally started. <laughs> so I'll add in a few notes on there as well as I go into reflect for the week. 
This is a bit of a longer plan with me than we've been doing, but I thought with a little bit of a different approach, talking through the different stationery today, talking about the new pencils and stuff, it would be good to relax. So hopefully you had a good time hanging out. I know I did, I'm very excited to go into using this week and see how this different approach handles and if it does well for me. So we'll reflect on that next week and talk through it. So thank you again so much for hanging out with me today for this week's plan with me and I'll talk to you very soon, see ya.